To get started on this portion of the project, you should have already finished the mystery hand moving in, swiping the baseball, and then replacing it with the bomb. What we want to do now is animate the wick on the bomb and have it placed inside of the hand. To do this, let's go down to our timeline. Let's make sure your mystery arm is locked and we want to work on the hand layer. So select the hand layer and let's unlock this one. Now at the start of our animation, we want to have our baseball pitcher holding on to the baseball. So with the first frame selected, Let's go into, I'm going to zoom in to my hand so I can see it. We want to select the hand and let's double click on it to go into the hand icon itself. And you can see that the hand is going to have its own particular timeline. Now in, within this timeline, there is a layer for the bomb and the ball. There's also a layer for the front and the back of the hand. And for the most part, we're not going to be changing that up at all. I'm going to lock down both of those just to make sure I don't accidentally work on those. So with the first layer on the ball bomb layer selected, let's choose our ball symbol from our library and drag it on to the frame and place it right where it needs to be. Then we can return to scene one. You can see it's now in here. And we want to have the hand reach in, grab the ball at this time, and then move back out. So it's at this frame that we want to have the ball disappear because this is when the ball is actually being grabbed by the mystery hand. In this case it's frame number 60 so I'm going to insert a keyframe on the hand layer at frame 60 and then we can double click on our player's hand. And let's insert a new keyframe at frame 60 on the ball bomb layer as well. From here we can simply delete away the ball. Now when we return to scene 1 it looks like the ball has made the swap moves out. Now we want to place the bomb in hand here. So right as it disappears. So in this case by frame number 77 we'll hit F6 on the hand layer. Let's carefully double click on the hand and then from here on frame 77 let's insert a new keyframe and then we can select our bomb. There it is. Let's drag on our bomb into this layer and place it within the hand. Now we want to have this bomb match the rotation and position of this bomb. So I'm going to hit my Q, rotate it up, and roughly match the same position of it from here. We can then return to scene one and test it out. You can see where it stays in position there. Now if it's off on the rough animation, that's okay. The, th the main thing is we've got the same thing. We want to be able to see the wick as it burns down. Now if you're following along in the book, we're on page 92 where it talks about the wick burning. So to show this wick burning, we need to enter the bomb's symbol and edit the symbol itself. So when you go over to your library's panel, double click on the bomb icon this will take us into the bomb isolated. And I'm going to zoom in, command and the plus sign, till I can see my bomb. And you can also see on the timeline that there are three separate timeline layers for this. There's one for the bomb itself, the spark, and finally one for the wick. Now the setup for this is we want to have this spark follow along the wick and have the wick disappear as it's burning away. Let's set up and have the spark move along the wick itself. So going down to the spark layer, I'm going to unlock it and let's right click on this layer and add a classic motion guide. This is going to add a little guide on top of our layer in which we can draw a line for it to follow. And we want it to simply follow that line of the wick. So in the first frame of the spark guide, let's choose either your pencil tool or your pen tool and draw off a line. In my case, I'm just going to use the regular pencil tool. In my properties panel, it really doesn't matter the color of the or, or size of the stroke. We simply want it to follow the same path. So click and carefully drag over it to place it on top of here. That looks good. To make it a little bit easier to see, I'm going to turn off visibility of my original wick just so I can focus on that particular line. Now we want the spark to stay there just a few frames and then start moving. So I'm going to move my 
playhead down just a little bit, maybe to frame, we'll start at frame 15. We'll hit F6 to insert a new keyframe, and this is where we want it to start following that line. Now with my spark selected, make sure that it snaps or is right on that line, and we want it to have a good slow burn. So let's go all the way to the end of our timeline, and we'll insert one more keyframe. We'll hit F6 on that spark layer, and then by there, it should have reached the end of your line that you have at the end there. Now we can go back and let's add our motion tween. So with the first keyframe selected, we'll add our little classic tween between both of those. Also with this first frame selected, uh, once you've added your motion tween, let's go over to our properties panel and we wanna make sure it's oriented to the path and that it's snapped onto that path as well. So with that done, and that first frame selected, we can click on our spark and make sure it's nice and snapped onto that line. There it is at the first. Let's go to the very end. You may need to turn off visibility of your bomb just for a moment. And we want to make sure that that is also snapped to the line as well. If need be, there, got it with that. Let's test it out. So as it follows, it should follow the path of that line. That's looking good. From here, we'll go turn on visibility of our bomb. And let's also focus on getting rid of the wick as it moves too. Also from here, I'm gonna turn off visibility of my little guide so that it's not in the way. So selecting the wick layer, we want the wick to also start burning and moving at this point too. In order to get it to disappear, we need to create what's called a mask layer. Going down to your timeline, select that wick layer and let's create a new layer on top of it, and we'll call this our mask. It's very important that the mask is on top of the wick layer. Now inside of this layer, let's right click on it, and let's choose mask as its option. Notice that this will automatically place the wick inside of that mask layer. Now the mask works by creating an object and whatever is inside of the object is what's seen. So we wanna be able to draw off a simple shape and have it change its position. So with this, on our mask layer, I'm gonna insert a keyframe right here, F6, and this is where we want to draw off a simple rectangle. With our rectangle tool selected, we're gonna go over to our tool properties. I'll set my stroke to be none since we don't need a stroke, and I'm gonna fill it in with something that's nice and noticeable. In this case, I like to use a blue. And I can see I've forgotten to unlock my, la my mask layer. So let's unlock that layer. And with that 15th frame selected, click and drag a rectangle that can cover the entire wick. Now it may be a little bit difficult to see where the end of it is, but that's okay for here. As long as it matches the length of the wick and covers the entire height of it, that's what we're looking for. Now let's go all the way to the very end and create a keyframe on the last frame, grab your free transform tool, and we want to have this object completely squash in and reveal the mass that's below it. To do that, hold down the option key as you click on this right side and drag it inward to make that transformation. Then you can go down to your timeline and let's create just a simple shape tween between both of those. Now you can see as it moves, it's going to follow along with that little spark and reveal it. The mask works by revealing whatever is behind the shape that you have. Now to test this out, let's go back up to our main frame, main scene, and we can play it from its starting point. In this case, we'll play it right here and hit return and you can see the wick is slowly burning down. That's what we want to see. Now it's okay that it starts over because by that time it's going to, uh, it's going to be moving on to a different animation, so we'll get rid of it at that time. With that done, now's a good time to go up to File and save your document. And let's move on to animating each individual part of our baseball player. We'll start off with animating the top half of our baseball player in the next video.